Yo, my peoples, what's up? Welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. Jason here, and today I have a solo crowdfunding feature for this very big game that barely fits on my camera, but I am doing the best to bring this to you. This is Pampero. This is a Euro-style game, very heavy game in the mold of a Vital Lacerta-style game for one to four players in which we are playing Energy Magnate. Our goal is to recreate the power grid of Uruguay using its abundant wind. So we're going to be uh, making these windmills. We're going to be collecting power, providing power to all little towns uh, in the land. And whoever can do that in the most efficient way will win the game. I will not be providing a full playthrough here in this feature. I recommend uh, John Gets Games and Before You Play and a lot of other excellent creators have gone through the uh, full playthrough of uh, Pampero in the multiplayer. This video will feature the solo mode. Uh, as I am posting, it is the final days of the Kickstarter. People have been asking about how does the solo mode work? Well, I'm definitely happy to bring that to you. I have uh, spoken with the designer about the solo mode, what they uh, intend, how it works, and I would like to take this feature to walk you through a full round of what this very involved but very evocative bot called the VJ bot is going to do for us in terms of providing an opposition as we play Bampero. But before we get to all that, let's talk about the One Stop Co-op Shop. We are a gaming empire. We have our podcast, uh, which we talk about all sorts of co-op games, new games, old games, game features, interviews, whatever you want to cover in the gaming space for co-op, our podcast is here for you. We also have our YouTube channel. You're here. Go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. And while you're here, hop over to the YouTube stream channel, uh, where we feature slightly different content in a whole different format uh, for you. Once again, solo and co-op. We also have our Discord, which is an amazing community. I'm hearing them talk about uh, the different games, talking about Pampero uh, and asking for that solo mode. So we're happy to bring that uh, to them in the Discord community. We have a Patreon in which you can purchase access to exclusive tiers, exclusive content in uh, our Discord. But if you just want to stop by, it is completely free to join. We are the One Stop Co-op Shop, your one stop for solo cooperative gaming goodness. So before I get going on talking about the solo mode, I want to give a sense of the general game flow uh, for the multiplayer so that you understand what's happening with the solo. So uh, you're looking at Uruguay right now, uh, and it's highly underdeveloped. Uh, these are the little pieces uh, that you are going to control, which generate power. As you can see, there's not much uh, on the board. So uh, here is the rural areas. So uh, very underdeveloped, very cheap to build over here. Eventually, you are going to want to build down here, which is the more urban and developed areas. And also, you have these areas over here uh, represented by a deck of cards, which represents neighboring countries, which also want some power. You build up to that. <laughs> you have to take care of your own country's power needs first. So how do you do it? How do you build your energy empire in Uruguay? It all begins here in your personal play area. Every player is going to start with one of these and also a set of eight cards. Uh, every player is going to have that same set of starter cards and you can improve that as you move along the game. Every player is going to have three action markers and they're going to take three actions that will constitute a year, which is basically a round. For the most part, when you play a token, you'll be able to play a card there are ways of taking back cards that are played or also if you want to get batteries uh, that's also worth an action but for the most part uh, you are going to want to use your action markers to play cards on a typical turn you're going to play a card in one of these areas and then you are going to consult the cost over here so this is very simple play this cost me eight bucks and i let me build something whatever the card says in zone a so then on a future turns, when I have this a little bit more filled out, you have to fill in from uh, left to right. So then I can, if I want to, build this uh, other building in a zone B instead. So you notice I can build an A for five bucks. The, the money goes down a little bit as you get progressed. Or if I want to step up in class and in profit a little bit, I can start building in zone B. So eventually I will be able to build in the highly lucrative zone C, uh, you see that 17 bucks, which is a huge amount, 
but uh, that is how you get money. You have to spend money to make money. In this game, the money is the point. So you're going to be sacrificing uh, for the short term, but hopefully you'll be able to get that lucrative uh, contracts and that lucrative money coming in. So that is how you win managing all that money stream in and out. So here are examples of the different pieces that you're going to be interacting with in Pampero. So uh, the very basic uh, thing is the bulldozer. Uh, which allows you to build. You must have a bulldozer somewhere in order to build anything else. So then this is where a lot of the interaction of the game comes from. So if you want to just build on your own bulldozer, that's fine. You just pay to the bank. But you can also build to somebody else's bulldozer. Let's say they're in a zone where you really want to go and you don't want to waste the action. There is an action card that allows you to move the bulldozer. But man, that is a depressing waste of time. <laughs> Sometimes you just want to get the thing built. So you would pay the other person in order for them to use their bulldozer and then they would deal uh, with the bulldozer after you've built something. So that is a push-pull, placing your bulldozers in places where you think your opponents are going to go. So in terms of structures, one of the things you're going to want to build a lot of are windmills. That is how you get the power in the first place. We have these windmills to take advantage of the strong Uruguayan winds. And they generate uh, energy, which is kind of a secondary currency. A lot of what you're going to do in the game, you have to spend energy to do it. And that's where you get it. The second kind of structure that's really important to build are these uh, transport towers. So uh, in terms of like real life thematics, uh, imagine that the uh, windmill is generating the energy. These towers are how the energy gets transported from that source into uh, the other areas down below. You must have towers uh, really to beat the game. I think the towers are the most important part uh, of the engine of Pampero. And I'll show you that in just a second in detail. So I have made my energy. I have structures for transporting the energy. Now I need a destination for all that energy. That would be here, the towns all across Uruguay. So they're represented by these markers and each marker is going to focus on a certain type of uh, residence or uh, this would be a resort. You can also power buildings and uh, different uh, commercial areas. Uh, there'll be different contracts that you can fulfill and they're gonna be uh, various levels of lucrative uh, return. So you have to manage all that, which buildings are you gonna power so that you can get the maximum return. As I build my infrastructure and I claim contracts, I will be manipulating this uh, personal power grid. Every player is gonna have one of these. So when I claim uh, this contract, I will be able to place it into uh, this area and I'll be able to place this transformer indicating that is my space, mine, uh, into the town zone where the contract was originally put. I would consult what kind of contract I took. In this case, it's a residential. And this is represents different kinds of income for the different kinds of buildings. So this is residential. So I might move my piece over one. And when the scoring happens, I will get more money uh, depending on how far I'm able to push over these income markers. And here is where the game elements, the euro elements, the management uh, really comes to the fore because you can't just build willy nilly. You have to build in sequence. Uh, the most important part of the board is probably the power uh, towers. So then uh, I could build in this area because I've already built this tower. But in order to build any of these future transformers, I have to be able to transport the energy to those areas. So I can't just rush this area. I have to invest in building lots of towers, which will unlock the ability to place these future transformers. So then I have to manage that. I have to manage my path. I want to take a smart path so I can get uh, good bonuses that combo with what I'm doing. The transport towers also interact with my ability to even provide services in the first place. So if I wanted to uh, provide to resorts or uh, businesses, I would have to have these buildings built first. Until I do so, I cannot claim contracts and make a meaningful progression uh, on these tracks. And so sequencing those actions, uh, making sure you have the proper infrastructure to be able to build correctly, uh, have the resources uh, at hand as you build, so important. Eventually, uh, you are going to pay it all off in this scoring track. So after every uh, consolidation where you've played those three actions, you're going to be moving this uh, down the track. And then eventually, you're going to be triggering scoring rounds. 
So the scoring rounds are going to depend on these modular goals. They change from game to game. So depending on who has majorities, and in this case, contracts or residences or windmills, you'll be able to get that money, which is the point of the game, and also score for the different individual pieces. So you could have a very similar layout. Matter of fact, uh, these pieces uh, go in the same area at every time, but it is these that change uh, up your strategy. So you're going to be approaching games very differently depending on how these are laid out. Once everybody reaches the end of the game, you notice there aren't too many rounds uh, in the game in order to be able to get set up. There are alternates where you can give yourself a little bit more time. But for the most part, uh, when you land uh, on the end, you'll tabulate your final score uh, and the most money. It will determine the winner of a game of Pampero. That is not nearly everything to see in this game. There are different uh, solar contracts. There is this board, which will interact with the uh, building of the energy towers. Uh, you can manipulate your turn order. You can sacrifice your bulldozers. There's, there's so many more things that you can do in this game, but I think that gives you enough of a sense of uh, how to play so that now we can move on to the solo mode. And so here is the solo mode right here. As you can see, it is a slightly shrunken down version of the main player board uh, with a few less transformer spaces. But for the most part, uh, it's there to emulate another player. This is not a high score variant. This is not a bot that exists just to put uh, pressure on you. Uh, this is a bot that is designed to compete with you, to simulate uh, a player that is going after the things that you're going after, trying to get majorities. Uh, so there's a lot to manage, but I think the effect is to feel like that you are facing a real opponent. And so I must note here that this is prototype. Uh, I received this just for illustration purposes. There's going to be a lot of more cards uh, here in the area that operationalizes the bot. And there's going to be a bit better <laughs> uh, set of markers over here. I'm just using uh, index cards to indicate uh, the purpose, but I'm sure the final production will be much more beautiful uh, for the solo bot. And so when you pick the tiles that will be operational in your game, you will pull the matching solo cards. So then here I have the house, house majority over here. Uh, this is the windmill and this is the uh, remote contract. So this is how the bot scores. It is going to relentlessly pursue majorities uh, in these areas. And so we have one, two, three on the side of this board over here that is going to correspond to these markers. So then uh, in a game of Pampero, you begin with one windmill. And so this two over here is going to be there. Uh, both characters actually are going to have one windmill on the board. Uh, begin with no progress on the residence track and no remote contract. So these uh, markers one and three will start at zero. So I think the best way to understand bot behavior is to just demonstrate it. So I'm going to play a sample year of three turns and show you how the bot responds. So then uh, for my very first action of the game, and the player always goes first. So I'm going to be able to do that. Turn order doesn't matter here. Okay. I'm going to play my windmill card. I'm going to pay my eight bucks. Uh, I'm using money from the Now or Never game. <laughs> they did not provide uh, me with money, but I have plenty of games with money. Uh, so I'm sure that there will be plenty of nice Uruguayan coins uh, provided in the final production copy. Anyway, so I've paid my eight bucks and I'm going to use my bonus token right here to generate an extra energy. So I could choose to generate three bucks, get that back, but I feel like I want some energy. So then I would get one, two energy from building this windmill in zone A. So like every good solo Euro bot, uh, the VJ bot here in Pompero likes to cheat. So uh, every space is considered to have a bulldozer for the sake of the bot. So if I wanted to build anywhere else, I could, but I'll be paying that money to VJ, which I do not want to do. Instead, I'll just pay the money to the bank and I will place my windmill on this space right there. Uh, that is a mix. This allows me to move my bulldozer and I'm going to move it over here. I plan on building a tower over there next turn. I started the game with one energy, so I'm going to bump myself up to three. And also, since I got a second windmill, I'm able to bump myself up to two windmills on the solo track. And so now the bot goes, and it cannot stand that I have gone ahead of it in majority. So the bot wins ties. Uh, the bot wants to get to a point where it is tied with me, and it will not rest <laughs> until it has done so. So normally, you would just uh, do the top card in the order and do whatever action there is, but because I have built a, a windmill, 
it will skip this card and try to catch up on windmill uh, acquisition. And so the card is a flow chart. I know this might be a little bit uh, heavy on symbols, perhaps a little bit difficult to parse, but if you understand that, you know, uh, basically, you know, check this. If yes or no, uh, yes, do this, no, go on to the next one. Yes or no, go on to the next one. In this particular case, uh, if energy is below 10, and we just started the game, the energy is below 10, the bot's maximum is 10. So if there was at its maximum, then it'd be no point in building a windmill, would there? Uh, it would move on and do something that costed energy so that it can make room for another windmill. But we'll have to worry about that. We are just going to build a windmill. They don't have to spend any money on it. They don't have to play a card. Nothing. They just get it and they get the benefit of energy depending on in what zone they're building. And so the solo rules will have a priority system in terms of uh, placing this. Uh, the main priority is that it wants to gunk things up for me, get in my way, and build in the area where I have the most structures, at least four windmills. So it's going to build the windmill right there. No dozer. It just gets it. It gets two energy for that, which will bring it from one to three. And also it moves its uh, windmill marker to match me. And so the bot breathes a sigh of relief. Ah, oh. <laughs> the bot is now in the lead for majority because, again, they win ties. And so I had spent one action disc on my first card play. It is now back to my turn. So I'm going to spend a second action disc on my second card play. And that is going to be a energy tower. So in this particular case, I could either spend what's on the board or I could spend a battery. Uh, batteries are another type of currency. Uh, this will especially become into play when I start to build a whole bunch up and I can fill, fulfill the foreign contracts. You need to store them in batteries because they can't just run power lines through multiple countries. Here you go. Have a battery. <laughs> That's my power. Anyway, but I'm not uh, worried about that right now. So I'm going to spend this one battery and I'm going to build an energy tower. As you saw, I placed my dozer right there, setting up to build this tower. I'm going to build uh, that tower right there. Normally, uh, you would be able to place this dozer wherever you want. However, I have a plan. So I am going to lock away this dozer. I no longer have access to this dozer. Uh, this will give me a one-time shot in the arm benefit. Uh, in this particular case, I want my three energy. And so I had gotten my two energy from that previous windmill placements, and I'm up to six, feeling flush. When I build a tower, see this little snazzy symbol right there? I get to take two of these uh, spaces over here that represent bonus tiles. Uh, there are further ways that you can shape your strategy. So you can either take two tiles, always uh, orthogonal, or uh, one tile and operate a space, or if there was open, operate two spaces, as long as they are orthogonally adjacent. If I had built in B, I could take A and B or two and B, but for the most part, uh, at the beginning of the game, I'm constrained to A. So I'm going to uh, move myself up one on a track, an income track, that will be the residence to set myself up to score a little bit, and replace that bulldozer that I put in the area. I knew I was going to do this, which is why I moved the bulldozer over there. Strategy! It is now time for the VJ's bot turn. Everything is tied, which means he has majority or she or it. <laughs> VJ actually stands for um, the designer's two children, uh, Victoria and I forget the J. Uh, but uh, Julian, if you are watching this, uh, shout out. I think that's awesome. Joaquin. I think the name is Joaquin. And so it's just going to operate its top card. So this symbol is a uh, place a transformer. So uh, the way that transformers work, as I explained in the overview, is that you have to have the available slot open because you have built a tower. The bot begins with no towers built, so it has to build a tower first. That is what this says. So this has a lock symbol. The, uh, the transformer here is locked. So then uh, you would proceed down this area, which uh, indicates that you build a tower. So once again, you're going to follow a priority system in terms of where you build the tower. Towers are different in the sense that uh, they want to build uh, wherever they can score, uh, begin to score the majorities. Uh, the card will dictate where the bot builds. In this particular case, they're going to build in the area with the most resident contracts. And so uh, you're going to know that the most residential contracts are going to be an A2. That is a constant setup thing. So the bot will build here. 
even the bot has to have a tower somewhere in order to fulfill a contract in an area. And that's very thematic. How are you going to get power to the peoples if you don't have towers to transport all that power? If this was a simpler bot that was streamlined and just getting in your way, it wouldn't bother taking tokens and adding all sorts of stuff. But because this is simulating a real player, it is going to take some tokens according to this priority system. And so uh, you'd run through it for zone A. And so it would take the first available uh, this token. I'll show you that right now. And so it goes from right to left. This particular token means that acquiring batteries, you would also acquire $2. So what the bot does, because it's a dirty cheater, it would take all of these tokens. And so as you can see, the bot has its own version of the tile board. So then you would just place the relevant tokens on there. So then when it gets batteries, that happens during consolidation, it would get the extra $2. Uh, it would move ahead on the remote contract space to get a little bit more income for that. And it does that. What is that? Well, let me take care of this remote contract progression first. And what a dirty cheater. It goes to the uh, promotion track. It doesn't use dozers the, uh, on the board. The only thing it uses dozers for is to get in my way. So this particular thing says uh, to earn money uh, from a track. The Sulu was at this point are a little bit unclear as to which track it would be, but I bet it's pretty bad. So go ahead and consult the solar rules for that one. And so I've been setting myself up over the first couple of turns. I'm going to use my last action of the year to fulfill a contract. So that would cost me $5. Let me go ahead and spend my now or never coin and take a contract. And so you have to take contracts in areas where you have uh, towers. Uh, you can use your own towers for free or you can pay the bank uh, whatever money you had paid to activate the action to use someone else's towers. I want to use my own tower. That's amazing. What I set myself up for is to build this lucrative uh, contract. So when you go uh, to a place and you acquire a uh, one of these things, uh, if it is in a linked area and you can pay the cost, in this particular case, it is four energy, uh, two and two, then you can acquire both of the tiles. Fantastic. So I'm going to lower myself by four and I am going to build this uh, tile right there. Delicious. Mm. Oh my God, I can't believe I made that mistake. Oh, the management of the game strikes me in the butt. So... As you can see, I have not yet built the capacity to build commercial towers yet. They're delicious. They're very lucrative, but I need to have more infrastructure set up in order to build that tower. I cannot purchase that token. Oh, well, what else can I do? So that is where I placed my dozer. And so instead of fulfilling that contract, I'm going to go ahead and use this multi-use uh, thing that I can use to fulfill all sorts of other stuff. There's no bonus, but the, the banner here is flexibility. I am going to build that tower and unlock the ability to fulfill that contract. <coughs> oh no, wait a minute, I messed up again. Look where I put this dozer. It is on this uh, a windmill space. I did not plan ahead. If I wanted to, I could put it over here. I could pay that money to VJ because VJ occupies that uh, area, but I don't want to do it. So I have to make do with my suboptimal planning and come up with another plan. And so, so instead of spending the four that I would have over here to get these two, I can settle myself to just buy this one, spend my two energy and uh, purchase this. I have the tower. This is fine. This is what is called a lucrative contract. I'm able to move the residence marker over two. Let's go ahead and take that transformer, uh, put the uh, contract there. This transformer will be on the space where it was vacated and I get to move this marker two spaces. So that poor planning might have been disaster, but there's lots of different options. As long as you know where to go, at least I salvaged that turn. And so the last thing I do is because I do have a, a token on my a power grid board, I move my token up one. And you know what happens? The bot gets mad. It doesn't like that it seeds uh, majority, so it is going to do whatever it can to get that majority back. So it is going to fire off this card, uh, which matches the one uh, over here. It has an unlocked transformer. So... Uh, is there an uh, uh, is there a locked transformer? Yes, do that. Is the transformer unlocked? Move on to the next thing. 
Does it have the energy to pay for a contract? If not, it would have built the windmill to get that energy. Uh, so you see how the bot does things that make sense. And then uh, because it has the energy, it is going to find one of its towers and fulfill a contract in the area. It happens to be in a zone where there is a lot of one energy cost. So I'm going to go ahead and spend that now. And it is going to take one of the contracts in its zone where there is a tower. So uh, I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> There's like five of them over here. So I'm not sure which, uh, which one it would take. Uh, so I'm going to just go ahead and take one, uh, go ahead and check the solo rules for the actual priority of which one it takes, because I'm sure that's important. But for now, uh, for illustration purposes, let's go ahead and put a transformer here and claim this. I apologize if this was progressed over here. I jumped the gun a little bit, uh, but let's go ahead and put that there, move that over. And now it breathes the bot side release. Ah, I have the majority again. So now we go to the consolidation step. We uh, move the action markers off, ready to be deployed next turn. And we take back one of these cards, the last of these cards. You can get a token, which will allow you to take any of the cards in the row. That's pretty sweet. I didn't take that. <laughs> you can also, in a future year, use one of your actions to reclaim your cards and also manipulate turn order. Uh, that's great for the multiplayer game, uh, for the solo. <laughs> That's a real waste of time, uh, so make sure that you have uh, used these effectively. So now I collect some income, so I check where I am uh, on the progress, so that's zero right there. Uh, we have one, two, three for one dollar, and two dollars uh, right there, so I will collect one, two, three, five dollars. Uh, that will be my consolidation phase. Uh, I can unlock further uh, improvements in money by building more towers. More towers, more towers, more towers. Other thing that happens in terms of the personal uh, upkeep on the board, I would gain batteries relative to how many of these towers I have unlocked. As you can see, lots of spaces, lots of opportunity to get batteries. Uh, you see that the batteries are useful for extra currency to build towers or to fulfill uh, remote contracts. So those are always good to have. I happen to have one unlocked, so I would get one. These would move forward. We're a little bit closer to the scoring round, which will happen in a couple of years. Should probably also show you this as well as I progress these uh, tokens. Once a token lands over here and I have unlocked it uh, in terms of the built towers, I can get a specialist card, which is an advanced card that I can use to take actions. But that's a little bit further in the game. Not ready for that yet. You also have to track all the stuff that the bot gets. The bot does get uh, batteries or would get batteries if it had built that tower. It hasn't built that tower yet. It does get income. Income is points. Uh, it would fire off a token like this. So when it does get a battery, it would get $2. So that'll happen probably on the next round. Uh, so just make sure that you are tracking everything that the bot gets. Yes, it does get stuff. And so that's going to do it for my presentation of the solo mode here in Pampero. So uh, the thing I really wanted to emphasize, uh, aside from the mechanism stuff, the flow chart, uh, reading all the symbology, uh, just the feel of it, I really enjoy how it kind of freaks out Whenever you step ahead in majority or the player does, then it just it responds immediately and tries to go after you. So it really does put pressure on you. You can also take advantage of that. So let's say that you have a strategy where you can kind of leap ahead a little bit and make the bot catch up to you, make the bot kind of waste turns. If you notice that it has low energy, then, you know, try to pursue things that will kind of lock it in a little bit. You actually have that control because uh, the bot just will pursue that majority no matter what. You can use that to your advantage. So that's another thing to um, add into your strategy. This is a lot, but I think that the juice is worth the squeeze in this particular case. I happen to really like this game, what I've played from it so far. So I can't wait to get a production copy to the table and I'll give you a full playthrough of Pampero Solo Mode when I do. This is Jason with the One Stop Co-op Shop reminding you that we will see you at the next stop.